question has been asked to me, is Real Animator Training Library the real deal? Is that Real Animator Training real? Absolutely. The Real Animator Training uh, provided by AMB Animation, um, it is absolutely the best ever, ever. Is Real Animators Training for real? Yes, yes it is. Where have I been learning animation? Well, the Real Animator Training Library. And there's so many videos in the library that you could learn forever. I'm just so happy with the way that I've progressed since I've started in the AMB Animation Library. I'm a post-production artist. I'm also a member of the AMB Real Animator Training Library. Is AMB's Real Animator Training for real? I definitely have to say I think it is. Uh, I've been to art school for four years um, and I've never had any lesson that was as good as the ones that AMB gave me. AMB animation can be a life changer. It certainly was for me. I totally love it. Uh, that's what I have to say. That's the way I have to say that I love it because I must admit that at first I didn't trust it too much. I never thought that would make that difference in my life. So I went ahead and hopped on into the library and that library is just so valuable, so many things you can learn and every video is like packed with this information that I would never be able to get anywhere else. I bought this in support because it has changed my life and you know everyone's lives are being changed by, by this and the, you know, this experience has been great. It's just truly amazing. I may have said that already. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's been one of the best things that's happened in my life. Is Real Animation Training Library real? It doesn't get realer. Thanks. So, are you going to join the library? Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. Okay, well, um, this is going to be a shorter stream because um, obviously the purpose of this stream is to give work to one of my subscribers. Um, now, it's not just um, one of my subscribers who is just been picked from a lucky dip. Uh, Life Fantasy has been following me for a long time and uh, she has been um, a Real Animator Training Library uh, member and she has taken her work to an exceptionally high level and it has been my intention to give her some work for a long time. Um, now, a lot of this as I've been building, expanding Real Animator Training, uh, it was initially the library, but I've been wanting to also have uh, content creation, high level content creation, hand-drawn animation at its highest level. Um, uh, I'm having to, you know, invest a lot of my own resources into these things. So. I've given one other Real Animator Training Library member some work in the past, uh, which was Aaron AOX, who did a marvelous job cleaning up uh, some dialogue animation that I did. And now I have uh, been waiting for the right project to, uh, to really use Life Fantasy's abilities and, um, and of course, pay her for them. Um, uh, so she has agreed to the uh, to take on the job, and I'm very happy about that. And this stream, I'm going to be briefing her in what we what what is needed, what is required. Um, now it's going to seem like a simple job to many lay people, but I'm going to say here and now that it's not a simple job. It's it's one that I think of all my members, the only one who I feel confident uh, in, in giving this work to um, 
at this stage, at the cleaning up the key and extreme stage, is life fantasy. And we're going to talk about why it's not so straightforward um, as, I, as you watch me brief her uh, and why you need to have really good drawing nuances and an understanding of how to contain form and volume because that's what clean up animation is all about. So before I go in and start to uh, explain to Life Fantasy, who is in the chat, um, what I expect from her to do this job, um, I will say a quick hello to the people who are making themselves known in the chat. So we have got Mute Midori Animations, how are you? Um, Life Fantasy, of course is the center of attention on this stream. Uh, Mute Midori Animation's been a hot second. Oh, I get you now. I was wondering what that comment meant. Uh, Drewby, how are you, Kay? Hey, the lovely Hervonia Baker. Uh, nothing will take away the joy of creating art. That's absolutely true. I mean, Hervonia Baker sent me an image of uh, a photorealistic pencil shading of somebody's face and uh, a rough animator's drawing i believe it was all um i'm not sure who did benny um could have been frank thomas or ollie johnson one of those guys ollie johnson did rufus from the rescuers and it said pro next to the rough drawing and amateur next to the shaded drawing and it's true because the shaded drawing however to the layman might look good it was just a easily replicable thing that any entry level artist will do and AI will do that but the drawing of a certain expression a certain way which is very organic you know it won't have you know these things just go if you don't draw you won't understand you just like a lot of people watch a lot of this uncanny like dead they, their eyes are used to the dead kind of symbol animation so you see some AI generated artwork which looks kind of goodish but it's that dead kind of expression of those like very stiff kind of illustrator drawings that is filled all over instagram i mean digital painting takes some skill but ai does it like that now whereas line art hand-drawn animation which where you're drawing characters expressions and unique poses which can't be photographed or come up from anywhere else but your imagination that's not going to be duplicate, duplicated, you know. Um, so quite right, uh, Mute Midori. Drewby, um, I don't know if you're going to, I mean, this stream is going to be valuable information, Drewby, because we're going to be talking about how to clean up animation. Uh, and, and you're going to watch me briefing an animator, uh, a cleanup artist, um, on how to clean up some really high-end stuff. So maybe it's going to be quite useful. Stage lined, um, hello to you, Batch Dunes, um, and Kitcha Cat. Good to have her online. Okay, right, let's go and talk about the job and what's to be expected of uh, Life Fantasy. So I'm going to change my um, setup, get my mic on, turn the webcam off. So, the um, many of you have seen this now. Uh, the job that I want Life Fantasy to clean up for me is going to be this. So we're going to take a look at the animation. Um, we're going to take a look. So you'll notice that it looks almost clean at the moment, which is why I said many of you will think it's a very straightforward job, but almost clean doesn't cut it when you're doing stuff at this level. All right, so let's have a look at the animation. Ah, Ben, ah, Ben Aziz. I remember you well. Your death now seems a convention of such an existence. Neither blade, nor tooth, nor your uncommitted claws could hold you to living. Speak then. My brother, tell me, how does eternal contemplation torture a twisted soul? So this really excites me to give work of this level to a real animated training library member to tidy up. Um, 
uh it's extremely you know it's it's very challenging and very testing now what i've done here life fantasy is you'll see let's just scrub through the whole piece of animation you'll see that there's feet and everything you don't need to worry about uh cleaning up the legs life fantasy i did that all for myself so i could get the you can see a lot of the times they're held but there's subtle shifts here and there i did all that for myself so i could get a feel for the action and if i wanted to play with the composition afterwards i would have uh i will have would have the flexibility to do that but the final composition's fine it looks great uh so this is the you know there are over 360 odd uh drawings um or 300 plus you know i'm not sure if it's 60 but it's well over 300 uh drawings um and the majority of it is on twos and it's on uh, you know uh, with with the uh, ones in there as well now i will be using some other training library members to do the tight in-betweens uh for this but at the stage where we, you know where we want to clean up the keys um and the extremes i've broke i'm going to be breaking it into chunks so this is the first chunk that you'll be uh receiving uh life fantasy so you can see drawing 1 to drawing 25 to drawing 31 to drawing 55 to drawing 87 to drawing 93 to drawing 115 so you can see there's big big uh, jumps here and there is no chart in the uh, corner for you to worry about because as i said this job i you know is you if you look at my line everything the volume everything it almost looks clean but then occasionally we'll jump into these rough lines here right and occasionally you know it looks almost clean here but then there'll be a, a an odd rough line here and there and also my lines are not closed by the way so these lines are not closed so even if i wanted to color it in it would be a, a headache right so you're thinking well all she has to do is trace it right all she has to do is just trace these drawings what's the big deal well now i have taken it to this level because i want to guide life fantasy as much as i can and make her job easier because it is a lot of work you know even these 50 drawings initial batch so the first batch she's getting is 50 i'm going to pay her in batches so i'm paying her for this first batch of 50 drawings and then we're going to pay her for the next batch that i sent to her so at the moment we're doing the extreme poses right so no arcs no mouth shapes nothing like that so she's just doing extreme poses um from from there now i'm going to talk about things that i want you to do to the drawing life fantasy because it isn't just going to be a trace up job and checking the volume there are little things that i want you to address and use your eye because we need somebody with life fantasy's eye i'm just going to give you an idea of uh, life fantasy's work before i i commission her because i think it's important that those of you watching this live uh, commission and live briefing it's important that you understand um let me just stop this uh life fantasies abilities so if you go to real animator training on my website and you go to join right we're not joining the training library although it's very wise if you do there's a video here where i show some members of um of uh the training library and this is life fantasy's work right so this is life fantasy's work uh, let's press play and have a look at it Shh. come on follow me see really is well let, what did i say beautiful uh angela absolutely beautiful such a good study that she's made from an animator called william salazar who's a really strong animator actually um, um so just to be clear this is she's made a study of someone else's work but i just think you all need to see that just what's capable 
You know, life fantasy hasn't been to art school. She hasn't been to to art school. She's not a pro in the industry, although I feel she can animate better than a lot of pros in the industry. Even pros from back in my day in, in hand-drawn animation. 100%. Uh, a lot of people I've worked 100%. with who were on TV commercials and stuff. I think she's above some of their level. So... I just think this is just so inspirational and subconsciously you might think it's out of your reach. Well, I just want you guys to look what is in your reach. I mean, look what Angela has done. She's made a study, but she couldn't have made the study this good had she not understood how to animate. And that's okay. exactly what I'm, well, let's have I'm a look at what I'm job. talking about. Okay. So there we go. This is it. You know, she made a study. Isn't that nice? Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that solid? Isn't that great? Isn't that like yesterday people were talking about Sakuga, okay? People were talking about Sakuga. Well, that's kind of Sakuga-ish, isn't it? Now, she's made a study of uh, an animator's work, so this isn't her own animation. But I just got to be clear, to make a study this good, you've got to know how to animate properly. Right. You know? And that's You've it. You've got to know how to animate properly. That's to make that's a what that that's that's what what we're talking about. If you look at her line, her drawings, she's got that professional quality to it. She, you know, if I was to give this drawing to a hundred different people and ask them to trace it, it's going to come back in many different ways. And I can guarantee you, ninety percent of them, or even more, will come back with a very kind of traced like unconsistent uh amateur kind of trace line which doesn't have that animator's line and life fantasy has that line so it's very important that you understand that because that's that's part of the deal that's why i would give in-betweens tighter in-betweens to certain other people and even they've got to have that kind of line um, so it's not that people can't do the job, it's I want people to do the job well. This is a kick-ass piece of animation and we want people to do the job really well. So Life Fantasy is the one. Now Life Fantasy, um, you'll see this drawing here. This is the kind of line with, let me find uh, the one that I'm really happy with actually. Um is it this one this is the ideal line width okay so it's not going to be such a wide fat line that you have on your work it's just going to be a really simple and we're going to keep the work load as simple as we can for you right so you can see that as i'm working here we get really fat with the line sometimes this is too chunky too chunky right so Probably, I would say, this drawing here, number 263, that will be the guide for the kind of line width that we want. This character's intricate. He's got a lot of lines on him, unfortunately for you, but thank you. I uh, thank you so much for doing this. Um, and I find that the chunkier the lines, it, it takes away the, the drawing, you know, the 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 with the th the finer the lines the more sophisticated uh the drawing will look and this 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 is all about drawing this this job right so we want to keep that kind of line consistency throughout so i find if you just have the a particular brush setting and you use that that'll be good now um you will see here that as we go through here, let's talk about holds, right? Let's talk about, let's first talk about the, the things to watch out for. So while this looks very solid, so this is a straight up trace, this is a straight up trace. Well, not, not. There's little things I, I need to, but I'm giving you a general overview, right? So some of these look like straight up traces. Everything's been worked out. Everything's been solidified. But you'll see here where we won't, we'll be a little bit more vague, right? Um, and then it'll get even more sketchy around here like so now this might seem like a not a big deal right life fantasy this this might seem like not a big deal um let me just change my brush size but it will be a big deal right 
because because if you if we look at the frame count between 87 and 55 right that's 30 frames this is going to be moving very slowly and even like the direction of these things are like arrows right if they're going to be too down and they're going to be too up and that's going to be slowly in betweening from there to there right um see it gets its hair it's really clean and then it gets rougher and rougher and the more we get into cleanup mode we don't want this to be in betweening and these guys bending and morphing around the arm so these things are things that you really need to watch and be very careful and i mean this is why i've been extremely tight with this because you, if you watch the atlantis uh dvd they talk about these simple tattoos on the king's head face which were a nightmare for cleanup because no matter how tight they tried to do to do it it would always drift around on his face right so if you look i've been let me scrub through the entire animation so i've i've overall made your life very kind of um simply see even here there's a little bit of it going on right see but stuff like that we can get away with right but we want to keep it to a minimum right so i've been very very careful on this area here i've almost cleaned it myself because we want to keep that thing as consistent as possible you can see as he shakes his head now of course this is hand-drawn stuff it's an illusion so it's never going to be perfect but this is kind of perfect enough right because when you watch me play it back i'm scrubbing slowly you can see all the little um inconsistencies when i'm scrubbing slowly and we're just focusing on it but if we play it right it looks perfect right you're not gonna you're not really gonna see that ah uh, ben aziz i remember you well your death now seems a convention of such an existence. Right, there we go. That's enough. We don't need to keep hearing him say his, his thing. Leave him in peace. Right, so we need to be very careful. Even though they look clean, life fantasy, we need to be very careful about that. But don't stray from what I've done because sometimes, I like hair, perhaps this can be fixed because it goes, it grows down, right? rather than going up with his head but for the rest of it i would say stick with what i've done because it's squashing and stretching in accordance to his eyebrows right so it's it's not just pasted and plonked on there like a shift and trace we want some deformation because as he squashes and stretches his eyebrows um it it moves along with them very subtly right so it's it's not like hair particularly you can see it hair when he's he squints right there right there like that before it almost anticipates before it comes down so we want to stick to to that again you're gonna have to really stick to my mouth shapes right and every line that you see in there just put it in there even if you don't know what it is right um but make sure that these lines are closed and these lines so the inside of the mouth is closed and the tongue is closed right we need to make sure that those are closed right and the teeth are closed little things like this it's okay it doesn't need to be closed because it's all one color right but inside the mouth and the this is going to be a darker color and this is going to be a, a lighter color right so that has to be this little flap in the side of the you know his under muscle in the side of the gum his under gum hair that is that that needs to be followed sometimes it'll be there sometimes it won't right so i've been very very specific about the mouth because you don't have a model sheet right so you got to kind of keep an eye on those uh on you got to follow that to the letter there are some mouth shapes that are a little bit rougher right so i believe it's when he says i remember you well right 
Um, let's pull out a bit. So here he says, I, 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 right here we get some rougher mouth shapes, right? Here you see this rougher mouth shape. So we want to, you want to keep in tune with the kind of cleaner shape, really kind of define the shape and then define it in there. You can see that there's the tongue against the top teeth, right? And one thing that I did here, which I decided not to do because I wanted to keep it cleaner for you, um, is I scribbled that in. So that's all going to be bare like that. Now, the big thing for you to focus on in this job, which is really important and which is why one of the main reasons I want wanted you to do it, is the character's eyes, right? Now, this this character's eyes subtly get bigger and smaller throughout the animation. And that's intentional. So we don't want to change that, right? We don't want to change that. It's, um, it's, uh, let me, I need to change my brush size. It's, um, extremely important we stick to what I've done with the eyes but now what we'll notice around his eye right we have this eye mask right now here you can see in this first drawing I've closed it off right I've closed it off and then it's closed off in many drawings but then suddenly it'll be open right it'll be open and that you're thinking well what's the big deal in that right well in some places it's even less so, right? Like here, you see how rough this is, right? And, and, and the volume on this face can really wander a bit depending on the width of your line on these, on these things here, right? Um, and added to that, right? So here the, it's very vague. Um, throughout the animation, see here again, it's not closed, right? it's not closed and now the thing is is although I've drawn the the shape right and it works it needs you need to close it right but as you close it sometimes you'll find right that as we have the eye shape like this and the eye in here and the eye on top right you'll find that these this will sometimes be going here and this will sometimes be going there right now for squash and stretch purposes it's okay to have it going up and down right so it's okay to have it doing that way but we can't have it going too far out or too far in a little bit here and there we can live with but we can't have it going too far out and too far in. So as you're doing these things, I want you to basically use what I've got, right, with this bottom thing, right, with the bottom thing. The bottom thing that I've done is, is very correct, right? And I'm pretty accurate throughout, but I may have wandered a little bit, right? And then so we want... We want the bottom thing to be that, and then you can go with what I've got, and then if you want to think of it like this thing will be like one third, you'll join it with just a line, right? A thin line, not like the one I the, the line I showed you from that drawing number at the beginning, right? So we just want to close each of these things off. Now, as you see what I did here around the ripple on his nose here. I created that texture on his nose. So you got to kind of look at each frame that you have the, where that's not done. Now this side you don't need to worry about, but because it's a sort of front three quarter, we want to create a little bump there to give some texture to the nose. So you got to be like very careful. And then again, see here, how much of the eyebrow is in relation to that, that shape, right? So we want to, if, if we've got it like that, then it's got to be kind of consistent. It, this can't be coming out and coming in too much. But I don't want it to just be flat, 
right? Like a like a symbol animation, just flat. So we will have a bit of squash and stretch in there, but obviously this can't come down here like that, right? That's a big no-no. We've got to think of it like a, like a drawing like that, right? So what you can do on this one, rather than going in there like that, you can do it like this, right? And that'll help you keep consistent throughout the the animation so that's a big deal right that that's a that's a very big deal that's not a that's not an easy task right it might seem an easy task because my drawings look so finished and so good and crisp and clean but it's it's not right the mouth shape is pretty much um for you to just simply uh clean trace with a nice drawing now what we have with these things right with the with the fur it doesn't matter so much right i don't want you to try to keep volume like but this is where people ruin their animation and deaden it right we don't want this thing to these these triangles to be the same width all the time right it's it's fur it's hair it can expand so we're going to just use my drawings and um and that's fine, right? Sometimes you'll see these, um, oopsie. Sometimes you'll see these lines appear and then disappear, right? Um, but it's all good, right? And these things here, you can kind of stick with what I've done, but just keep them like consistent. Don't curve them like that right which is what I did exactly what I did here you want to think of them like a a angle with a with a curvature in there but they won't really be so curved right so you want to think of them like that but then don't worry too much about them being the same length or whatever because they um I don't want line weight to be in these drawings I want the drawing to be very simple um, line. Uh, I want the, the job to be as efficient and quick as possible. I, it's a lot of work for life fantasy and um, the budget is, you know, it's respectable, but it's, you know, it's no way near the budget that uh, this is really high grade Prince of Egypt feature quality animation. Um, and uh, it's not we don't have the budget to clean it up like that so the last thing i want to do is tell life fantasy to be do, waiting the line on this thing and then um keeping that weight line consistent when if, if that's the case she'll only be getting about three drawings done a day and she'll be making absolutely no money um so we don't want her to be doing that at all right and uh, what I've noticed, right, with Little Red and the animation that I've been doing, um, the other animations that I've been doing, uh, I, I kind of like the little color tests that I do with my stuff. And I never, I, I, I waited the line on a few of them and I didn't wait the line on a few of them. And I'm like, I don't really, you know, I don't really, I think, I think it'll be fine with some good art direction and some good color direction and the animation speaks for itself the weighted line is just like a frill that i don't really need we don't need to put that much energy in there i would rather have life fantasy also i would rather have her because it is such a task it's such an arduous lengthy task that even if you want to do it and you're passionate about doing it you will get bored right because it's it's this you're, you're tracing and you're tidying these long lines and one after the other after the other so your focus goes so i want her focus to be a hundred percent on the volume of the eye patches closing those eye patches that's the biggest most important aspect of of the job that i i want her to do which is the the primary reason why she's getting this job over her drawing ability um, even her drawing ability is 
the the next reason but the primary reason is um, her eye and her understanding of form and volume and her level of un drawing to a certain professionalism in her drawing of shape language um, so most of her focus I want on that because that's what gives the character what makes this let's just look at the animation again what makes this uh, all he's doing is picking up a skull putting it from this hand putting it from that hand but what makes it so good is the eyes the mouth shape is good but it's the eyes you feel the eyes i don't know if you like let's watch the animation again you really feel the guy's eyes right uh. Ben Aziz. Ah, Ben Aziz. I remember you well. Your death now seems a convention of such an existence. Neither blade, nor tooth, nor your uncommitted claws could hold you to living. Speak then, my brother. Tell me, how does eternal contemplation torture a twisted soul? So, even there when he says soul, that brief expression that we see, right? And this is one that you're going to have fun with life fantasy because it's really loose and you've got to worry about the volume, right? So we have this, him covering his face here just briefly. You see that, you feel it more than you see it. So, and it's, you know, getting this, I, I, don't, I don't know why I decided to do these really fat lines, probably because on this was for a tutorial for the pro archive that I'm building. So I wanted to separate the extremes from the keys and lock them down. But it's going to cause hell for the in-betweeners to like, so we need someone like Life Fantasy to consistent, make this line consistent so that when she starts putting in the next, like the breakdowns on the next pass, which you'll get um, uh, suddenly those in-betweens that I've done are going to be redundant because they in between to a much fatter line and we're gonna like this this is about two lines worth or possibly two and a half lines worth this hand right so if we've got some really tight in-betweens into this hand on my one it's gonna be kind of useless right so um, so that's why when I start giving um, uh, other people a chance to do the really tight in-betweens, um, they're going to be referring to my mouth shapes and my face shape for, the, for, for just the mouth that he's making. And they're going to be tracing my mouth. So if Kitchikat's doing it, she's going to be tracing my mouth exact. And but she's gonna be making sure that her in betweens are in betweening between life fantasies stuff, and this is all gonna be done without a chart because my animation is so exact. But life fantasy is gonna be building the arcs, building the halves, building the thirds, building the favors, and then people like Kitchikat um, and Michael Davis and Charlene. I'm just gonna say, you know what, just half, 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 half just really easy work for them but but it gives them an opportunity as well to to clean the roughs so this is basically what we want from you life fantasy i think i've covered everything it is the first uh so there are 55 drawings for you to do no there's one more thing i need to discuss with you um which is you will see the blue hair, right? You will see the blue. So the blue means hold, but on these initial drawings, on these initial drawings, Life Fantasy, now this is going to be very annoying for you, right? But on these initial drawings, I am... Maybe on this one, not, right? I was going to say trace back, but so... Here you'll have to draw this 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 in, but I think you can just um, you can just ignore that. Yeah, so you will just draw the red. You will just focus on the red, right? Um, but what I want you to do, right? Um, as you do that, is as I want you to 
combine it to make it one frame, right? Don't have them on separate layers. So if you're going to hold it, copy it and paste it in. Because when, as we're going to be working with, as you're going to be doing the keys, because these are the extremes. And before we go on to the breakdowns, you're going to be doing keys as well with the next 50, right? So I don't want you to be worrying about, is this a hold or is that a hold or is this on another level or that, right? So as you do all this, because it becomes a lot more complex with the arcs, right? So as you do this, just, just combine them and make one frame out of them. And then when we move on to breakdowns and keys, we can think about having the separate level stuff. And we'll talk about that there. But on these ones, I want them all to be just one frame. So you can save time by, I don't know about TV paint. You, I believe that's what you're going to be using. You can draw a lasso tool. Maybe it's got a lasso tool. Everything has a lasso tool. Everybody has a copy and paste, right? So you can just um, do the bit that you need to draw and then just copy and paste it and paste it in and flatten it and make it one one image right um for these particular frames only for these ones we can we can worry about that later yes the resolution should be um no this is a 4k one this this is i don't know if you can do 4k on um on uh but i believe this is 4k uh storyboard properties um project resolution 4k uhd right so this is 4k uhd so this might pose a problem for people like um so again here now you you never hear me talk software and say that software doesn't matter but when it comes to when it comes to training your skills software doesn't matter but when you are going to be working with people it still doesn't matter because i'm Life Fantasy is working with TV Paint and I'm working with Storyboard Pro, right? Not, I'm giving her Photoshop files, which can be read by most softwares, right? And she's cleaning up her work using TV Paint. So the software still doesn't really matter, but what does matter is, you know, a certain level of um professionalism professionalism right that matters meaning that you know people have been skimping out and with with their budget on things and saying i don't want to invest i always talk about like roi business investments right return of investments People are like assets are simple and liabilities. Liabilities, right? If that's how you spell it, I'm just working fast, right? Assets, liabilities, right? So video game people would have video games, Netflix, right? Amazon, cinema, party right vacation i hate to put it in there i mean um but the thing is is like so people spend all their money on this and they say they they they've got they they want to work in animation right the thing is is you can use the free animation which is an asset to train yourself but some of that software while it can read photoshop files i don't know if it can do 4k it might only be able to do 1080p right it might be free and easy but it might slow down when you're dealing with a heavy work like this right so you need to you need to invest i mean it's easier than ever you can you can uh use the software for a month now so you don't it's like paying for netflix for a month or pay for photoshop or toon boom or um uh tv paint i, I believe tv paint is a one-off fee but even that tv paint would be like um uh, 
cost the price of uh, of, of an Xbox, right? Or like or or a couple of games for an Xbox, right? So it ain't that much money. And then what you'll have is, is then you'll be able to make money from that investment, right? By doing professional grade artwork. So that's where software matters, right? Software doesn't matter for, for technique or skill. Sometimes it'll be nice if you have the same software as somebody else. Um, I think I don't want the line to be too soft and blurry, um, life fantasy. I, I, I just want it to be like a, a bitmap. Let me do it. Let me do an example. Let me take this drawing here, right? And let me, let me, I've got bitmap tool here, right? So copy layer. So I'll show you what I expect, right? Good, good question. Good question. Right, so I'm going to paste this layer in. Right. And I'm going to make this a faint color. And I'm going to create a new bitmap layer. New bitmap layer, right? So I'm going to get my brush tool out. I want it to be a uh, raster like pencil so it's like scan so let me check that's a little harsh right so let me go to let's try a nine right nine is a little fine so right I'm going to come out in a minute. See, there's no wobble to the line. There's no like little bit of this. It's all. So one thing that you might want to start doing is working with the silhouette, right? Breaking things down as a silhouette. A, a good way to speed things up, life fantasy, is sometimes right particularly on these like rather than rotating your disc right I just go in here and whatever direction my hand is feeling good at right I just go in and work those directions this is a good swooping one right so I'm liking this this line width that I've got. This this line that I'm giving you here is is kind of like the quality that I want. I don't know something about TV paint. Whenever I see like um, people who work in TV paint, it's got this very fattish line that I've noticed. Like when I look at Aaron Blaze's tests, or there's this other guy on Instagram. My God, the guy is an absolute demon. I think he's from France and he's animating this guy doing capoeira. He really knows his anatomy. Such strong work. Every time I look at his work, I just nod my head in such uh, approval and admiration and inspiration. And I just think I, I, I sadly, I'm not doing him justice because I, I can't remember his name. But he uses TV paint as well. And I can tell it's that it's got that it's got that same kind of thick maybe they just like drawing thick right overly thick Aaron Blaze and this guy because um, I think this line for me um, life fantasy is good enough right that that that's fine we want to keep it simple I don't want you to work too hard um, I just want the line to be professional I don't want it to be kind of like this or or like this right right we want it to be um a representation of of the original uh line in uh bitmap form if you like right um a representation 
But again, go back to the go back to the line with that. Um, go back to the the drawing the, the the frame number and use that width as the example. That's the kind of line that I that I want. So we just want the same kind of line, but with the with the with with your uh, slightly softer bitmap brush. Very slightly softer, not too much. So I guess if you're saying a hard brush stroke, that's that's what you would call it. So that's um, that's pretty much it. Uh, Life fantasy. Um, I I don't really have anything else to say. If you've got any more questions, you can always fire me an email. What I will do is is I will send you a link to Dropbox uh, with these files zipped up and. Um, they're all PSDs. Um, let me show you them. So I have them here. Um, frames. So we have this great one uh, batch zip, batch one, great one, batch one. So you've got them all in here for you. Uh, I will put them in Dropbox. I'll give you a link to that Dropbox and uh, you can get going on that right so um that is it that is the briefing for life fantasy um on this particular gig um let me just delete that right let me save that so what i'm gonna do now before i go i haven't looked at the work in the group for a little while so I'm going to go to the group and I'm going to maybe for the next um, possibly half an hour or so, I'm going to have a little glance through there and see if there's anything I can help you guys uh, out with. So let me just open up um, GDP, which is Growth Development and Progress. How do I update you on my progress? Listen, life fantasy, right? Again, um, I don't expect you, right? I'm, I don't expect you to be, um, I don't expect you to be giving me it super, super fast, right? Um, it'll be nice if we could get through it swiftly, but I also have to understand the amount of work I've given you and I also have to understand um, you know you've got a job I believe and you've got you've got things that you need to do so don't feel so pressured to 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 stress yourself out about that I trust that you will do the work to an extremely satisfactory level so I'll I'll just let you get on with it and if you feel that you need to hear an okay from me before you really go flying forward with the job. What I suggest you do is you um, do about five to six frames. Maybe five. Five's a good number. Or seven. Seven. Seven's a better number. So give me seven frames and um, send them to me. And I'll inspect them and then I'll, I'll give you my feedback. I'm pretty sure they're going to be legit. They're going to be all good. But I, I have a lot of faith in, in your ability. But you can send them to me and then I'm like, okay, you know, maybe I'll say this, watch out for this, that, or whatever. Then just say, okay. And then I'll just let you get on with it till you finish the lot, right? Um, and that way we can work a lot more efficiently um, in that regard. So... Let's try that. Let's try you doing uh, doing the first seven, doing seven of them, and then uh, sending sending that seven to me, and um, and then we'll have a look and we'll take it from there. So um, again, um, it's extremely time-consuming work, and it's uh, again right. I've kept the budget respectable, but it's. Obviously, you know, that grade of animation is a multi-million dollar budget grade animation and 
it's coming from an independent production. So that means I've got to be a little bit more understanding about the time that that's going to take you. So don't feel pressured in any way, shape or form to to try and 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 um, give it to me as quickly as possible. I'd rather you did a good job and you had a healthy attitude about it, right? There's so much more things that I'm doing. Um, we're going to be doing another dialogue with him in Storyboard for the next part of the pro course. Um, we've got the Alpha Man project, which is really un in its full swing now. So, um, so that's what we're going to to do. I have full faith in life fantasy, just like Patch Tunes has. Um, it's been a long time coming, but hopefully, like you can see, that R in the background, real animated training. I always try to keep it real. So I said many years ago that I intend to give Life Fantasy some work. Um, and uh, here we are um, giving her some work and uh, a huge, a huge chunk of work, actually, you know. Um. All right, so uh, let's uh, now go into the growth development and progress group. And have a little look at um, who's been posting what, right? So this is our group on Facebook, right? It's the Real Animator Growth Development and Progress Community. Now, I used to do regular streams um, looking at the work in here. Um, as Real Animator Studios is evolving, it's harder for me to do that now, but this is still a great place and you've seen I've given I'm, I'm open to giving commissions to real animated training library members or people who impress me um, so this community is always my point of contact because real animator people are are like family or extended family to me they are the ones who are going to um, who are going to who care, who are who want to be part of real animator in some way shape or form who, who want to be in the real animator uh, space. So um, if I need things, I'll always look to uh, the community. And here I see the people like Selena Nina has been a regular um, uh, contributor here, as has Cameron, Cameron Black, Akau, uh, Charlene. Um, so many people are, 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 are regulars here and it just keeps you in my, in my mind and it lets me see what you're doing. I do glance at it even though I'm not able to uh, to look all the time and understand what's uh, what, what uh, and give feedback. I do keep an eye and say, okay, well, I can help this person, I can help this person and whatnot. So here we see Brittany Goddard, uh, who's not a training library member, but she's making hand-eye coordination sketches of Disney characters and uh, Cameron Black. Uh, with his drawing so one thing I'm gonna suggest to Cameron now Cameron I've been training you your your training library member but as you've been watching these streams you listen to everything I say so you've now started going over your roughs and seeing these shapes and and collecting them out and your drawing has come a really long way since you first started as I said I'm really impressed with Cameron he's like a machine he just keeps on going, keeps on going. He takes on board everything I say, and his drawing is coming leaps and bounds. Now, I'm going to show you where it all goes into Cameron. So, I'm going to do an example. Now, again, if you had a bet, if you can't do it with a tablet, I r strongly recommend you put away your stupid graphics. Not now, Cameron, I'm, I, you, I'm not talking to you, right? I'm talking on a wider thing here. If you can't hold your pen like this and you don't have the sens sensitivity to sketch like this with your digital technology, put the crap away, get a paper out, get a pencil out and do it with the side of the pencil. Because I'm going to show you a very powerful way of drawing here, but it's only going to make sense to people who have been following the, the things I've been saying. So I've been kind of building, uh, Cameron has gone through the anatomy archive. So he's learned all the bones, he's learned about the scapula, he's learned about the clavicle, he's learned about the humerus, 
He's learnt about the ra ulna, the radius. He's learnt about the uh, the scaphoid, the lunate, the capitate, the trichutrium. You know all of those, the hamate. He's learnt all about the the various bones, right? He's learnt about the true ribs and the false ribs, the uh, twelve thoracic ribs, the seven thoracic vertebrae, the five lumbar vertebrae, the five fused vertebrae of the sacrum, the ilium, the ischism. Why am I saying that, right? Because it's important that, like, when I'm going to show you this drawing method, if you do it without knowing this stuff, it's not going to be as powerful, right? And he's gone through, you know, trying to see things as just basic shapes, right? So I tell him to look at a life drawing and see things as basic shapes, and then trying to see the shapes of the negative space, right so he's gone through doing all that so when we look at when we look at your work Cameron so you can see him trying to do that hair right so now Cameron the next the next level like I love I love I love these little uh, moments that I have with Cameron because I know that when I tell him it he's gonna come back with and he's gonna like fill so many pages of his uh, sketchbook and I'm gonna be like wow when this guy is, you know, his, he's really got, like, he's got the best heart. Like, if, if, if I was going to go, go to a battle or something, I would want someone like Cameron, uh, uh, um, you know, to have my back. Because that guy, he has got so much heart. Like, I just say do this. I just suggest to him to do something on these streams. And the wall is filled over the next week with with that that's just so awesome so that's why i like to give my time to certain people in the community because when i look at what they're doing uh, and and the energy that they're putting into it it makes me uh, want to want to give more right so let's let's say i'm gonna go on google image search and i'm gonna type pose right muscular man right muscular man pose right that's something easy right so here we've got um, let's do this one right right so now what I want you to notice I do is, is I'm gonna hold the pencil like this right and I'm going to do the, everything that I've asked you to do before, Cameron, with the shape, with the shapes. Now, I'm going to be focusing on muscles. And maybe you don't know muscles so well, but you can look at those muscles as shapes and relate them to, it's all related to the bones, right? So, even, so we're going to be doing the drawing without taking the pen off the paper, right? Off the glass or whatever we're going to just keep that one line going and it's going to be filling in all and joining everything up right so this is a kind of fine art way of drawing that i touched on before um and i never had the the big cintiq when i did that so i would always have to explain like this but now i've got the luxury of holding it like a fine art brush with the bigger cintiq and I can got the pressure sensitivity so I can really show you how that works right so I'm gonna look at this guy's drawing here right I'm not drawing let me get a let me get a fatter brush right I normally wouldn't use it this 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 fat but let's do it right so I'm gonna draw a straight line here right and I'm gonna keep my pencil going right and I've got this shape here like that right then I'm gonna connect this shape here with this and now I understand the deltoids coming here and you'll get the muscles from the advanced archive Cameron with that with that turnaround right so I'm gonna I'm gonna then look at the arm here notice how I'm not moving my now this is where the obliques are gonna come like this how I'm not taking my pen off the paper and I'm looking at all those negative spaces, right? Funny, I still call it paper, right? Because 
I'll always have that in in my heart, right? It's not coming off there like that, right? This should possibly be wider, right? Right, so then we're going to come down the middle, right? And we're going to work his ab, right? Like this, with these lines here, right? Then we've got the pockets, right? I'm going to bring that hair like this. I'm going to keep it. See, Cameron, it's all moving. So everything I'm seeing, how this is, this should be lining up with the leg hair, right? So I'm just keeping everything moving. This hand should be out a bit more, right? And then this is also enabling me, like my knowledge of muscles is helping me. When you do the 360 turnaround in the advanced archive, I believe you might, you're, you're approaching it, Cameron. You'll be able to understand the muscle system a lot more because I really do get down and simplify that for you in the advanced archive there. So then we've got the thing here like this right the head is looking down it's in line like that right this is in line with the shoulder the nose right then we're gonna come up for the ear so we're gonna then come in for the head right and the eyes the mouth you see the famed AMB diamond being used there right so i've taken my pen off the paper or the screen right let's just out of interest flip this scene right it will kind of works in inverse right that's a that's that doesn't matter right you're not you're not gonna get it so perfect all the time right so don't worry about that so then what what you can do is you because I'm using vector, I don't have the soft bitmap brush. I could use bitmap, but it's clearer for you to see it in vector. So let's imagine that I did it with a with a with this very faint line. If I was in a sketch pad, and it would be a faint red like that, right? So now I can really come in there, and I can start. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you can really start looking at the drawing right and making it right so here he's got the serratus anterior right so then you can start making your drawing right i think i've kind of made my point i don't need to take this drawing particularly further right but you can use your um your underdrawing as the guide to kind of really help you and then you can tweak right you can just tweak things and then you'll start to and that's 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 the way you can really start to train your eye and have appealing connecting drawings right that make a lot more sense when you're doing your artwork right so here there's a lot of shadow here but we understand the deltoid is gonna be out this way right and it's all about line Cameron again I don't want to like think about the shading right again the life fantasy got the job because she's good with line right I've got got his hand in the slightly wrong place here but I'm just gonna go with it right there's more of a gap right so it literally is 
we're not trying to hide anything with the shading or anything like that we want to get our proportions right that's the main thing when you want to draw for animation you want to you want to it, you want to get your proportions right and that's what's going to make you um, in this AI world that's going to give you an edge because you you once you can draw like this right once you can draw like this and create poses from you from your imagination like this you can draw anything you want and then cartoonify it any way you want um, and it won't just look like a a a stiff bland expression pose right it, it'll just be um, see what I'm doing here the AI can do right so this this is like just the basic exercises for you to to be able to generate anything from your imagination right the AI will have to go to all of the other reference points it has to give you some copy right but you once you have the ability to draw anything you want right so working with this method now his eye is in complete shadow so i'm just gonna make his face up right you can then go and make up any pose you want right and draw it any way you want and cartoonify it and design it from anything from your own human imagination which is so much more um, instantaneous and you don't have to sit there and depend on everything you see the world is becoming more and more dependent um, you know so I've always said it you know you want to be an, a true independent artist right that's it uh, let's just let's just leave it at that I'm not gonna do any more to that so this is something that um, you can uh, you can work on camera right just uh, this kind of uh, drawing which will help you um, to get better and again just to quickly show you um, I'm not gonna I'm gonna close the Google down right and I'm not gonna look at anything you can see my face here right I'm just gonna make a pose up right I'm gonna make my own pose up from scratch right so let's have let's have a woman sitting cross-legged right I'm not taking my pen off the page so let's have her looking at her phone and holding a cup of coffee or something right, let's uh, keep that in line with that right so that's my basic um, from imagination so now I'm gonna do an anatomy pass on top of it right so the anatomy pass we'll have the clavicle right the center line this is where the the belly is gonna sit here the weights gonna be on on this particular so I do the bone of the leg out the side right. so then I kind of mummy draw this leg right connect it with this leg kind of turning this way right. 
have her on her feet like this right so then we're gonna think about the external obliques at the side and the thorax right the shoulder the looking at the phone here the hand a mug the head looking down so the maxilla so we have a bit of the head coming see I'm not taking my pen off the page right so now we have a pass like this all from human imagination right all from just human imagination so storyboard flip yeah so then if I want to go in and cartoonify this right or simplify it right I now have everything worked out for me right I can come in here right it's all it's all done You see, the phone will be here like this. Very quickly, it's all worked out for me. So this is where you're headed, Cameron, right? So I know like you seem to be like be made of steel right but if, if you ever feel that like you're putting in so much work and you're getting exhausted and you're thinking i need to be better i want the results faster i'm telling you you're headed you're you're headed there my friend right you're so headed there right so this is all from imagination, right? So the original drawing was kind of like a warm up for me, but you can see now we've got a pose just like that. And we can push it and take it further and it didn't take long at all for me to uh to do that, right? So hopefully that kind of um that's just storyboard flip selected scene yeah everything's balanced as well you see how everything is balanced there's nothing off balance because i'm using this fine art drawing method um i don't talk too much about fine art drawing um on my channel because i want people to understand animation and drawing for animation is very different but if you want to be a good animator you will have to be good at drawing but drawing to this level and drawing like this is a skill in itself just like animation is so you can't do it all at the same time you can but then you're gonna you're gonna be at the end of life by the time you get to where you think you want to go so the way to speed things up is to focus on one thing at a time this graft or that graft right um you could like work on one thing like 60 percent of the week and the other thing 40 percent of the week that's one way of doing it but i know that a lot of people just think it's all about drawing but you could draw there are plenty of people who could draw like that 
in the fine art way, but they don't know jack about animation, and they'll be so contained within that drawing that this is how I draw because they've built their habit to draw like that, that when it comes to animating, it's going to inhibit them because they don't see things as shapes and moving. They see things as shapes, but they don't see how that shape is going to transition into another shape and what a half is and what a third is and all that. So, and how to a group of shapes are going to like turn into another group of shapes to cheat the eye into an illusion of... So animation is a different kettle of fish. So you can't be drawing like that when you're trying to learn animation. It doesn't happen. So that's why I don't talk about that too much. But if I can, but it's important in your development when you're getting better and better. And um, so, Cameron, that's uh, that's that's my um, that's my advice to you. And then I would also say um, to Brittany Goddard um, because. Brittany Goddard, these, some of these are good, but they, they look very, I, I know these drawings, I know uh, Ward, um, it, it, was it Ward Kimball or Ollie Johnston did Lampwick, Ward Kimball did uh, Jiminy Cricket, and I know this drawing very well, it's a little flat and your facial balances are off, so when you do these kind of drawings, rather than just making it hand-eye coordination, I want you to really check your eye line right is your eye are your eyes central right right are they central it don't i don't have one eye here or if this is going this way right and then the mouth and the nose is going this way you see this thing on the internet where they say this is what the face should be made up of right well you know they do have that where they have the triangle for Mickey Mouse his perspective of his eye getting bigger and all that which is it's a thing right but I would rather you you understand just the planes of the face rather than trying to become so formulaic earlier on and get things in the right place right so make sure that that if that's spherical that eye line is going around the sphere and there so this isn't here and this isn't here right or here i know you didn't do it too much like that but it has that vibe to it um what else we got in this group cameron martell does a head turn here varied head turn he's got basic head turn not bad varied head turn it's good uh stuff what we have here though is a bit of a the point of these head turn exercises cameron is you'll know the, the movements are a lot more mechanical and easier than the other stuff in the basic archive but the point of these head turns is to train you in volume control. So here your body shrinks. Here your body is shrinking. It's getting thinner. It's getting thinner um, as he's looking up, right? And his neck is getting longer and thinner, right? So this shouldn't be the case, right? Um... I like what you've done with the head. I mean, we're losing like this semicircle on the side, like all these different portions. See, that's what the basics archive of the training library is here to do. It's here to tra train you in keeping volume of all these separate portions of the face. So here that you've kind of got the line dancing around a bit. Can you see that line dancing around a bit? Um, Cameron, this is Cameron Martell. Um, and then his uh, chin, you've got the directional lines changing. So this is going this way, then it's going the other way, right? So we really need to keep an eye on those things. But, um, and again, the, the, the basic head turn was a little bit more successful. Um, I think the spacing here is a little bit tight, right? And then the arc of the, the nose comes up 
and down again right if I remember it's just a swoop a basic swoop and then a drift to the side so your arcing is a little bit right your spacing is you 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 know if I remember the head turn was kind of like this kind of arc right and we want to have the spacing in the middle quicker and slowing down here but your arcing is kind of like then when he turns his nose comes up and then down and then then it goes so if i watch the nose it's not a smooth swift arc so you need to make sure that when you're doing this exercise you really focus on the arc and try to manage the volumes that um that do it as i but actually though cameron while i'm giving you these pointers um you've actually done really well for a first try you've balanced the volumes quite nicely particularly for this very difficult varied head turn with the changing of the angle and all that it's the telescopic neck and the shrink shrinking body that doesn't quite hold up right but um but it doesn't matter because why do we call this real animator training right i just want people to understand what cameron has done is he's gone and he's done the full equivalent of a week of various bicep exercises right right he's tried this girl he's tried the hammer girl right he's just gotten acquainted with it he's tried the backward one right that's but that's all he's done, right? Maximum, he's just gone three times in one week, right? Does that mean he's going to get the muscles? No. He's just told his brain, this is what it, this is how I should do it. I should twist it here. And, that, and now he's got to keep practicing that, right? So where most people don't understand is, is just because he's done the exercise and he may have got things wrong, it doesn't mean it's bad, right? If you go to a gym and show the, the personal trainer how you lift weights and you think you're good, he will tell you that's going to screw your shoulder up, you know, pinch your scapula together, keep your back straight, isolate the bicep, concentrate on the muscle, tense your forearm, think about that. Have you tried doing a negative rep? How, count how many seconds, one, one thousand, two. So he will give you a complete new things to think about, about a thing that you thought you really knew how to do, right? And then you're going to think, oh, well, I, you know. So that's what's happened here in animation terms. That's why we call it real animated training. You've done nothing. You've done a fantastic job, Cameron, right? You've just become aware of some vital laws in animation and you've trained, you've started to build some brain cells on maintaining form and volume, right? So that's another thing about the online community of art. There are some sites which are way worse than others. The first thing they do or they try, they put it out there and go feedback, feedback, critique. What it is is just ego. I want attention, give me attention, right? It's, there's nothing to critique when you're just starting. There's things that you can learn, but really, when you have this kind of training video, you don't need to listen to anybody else. You just need to follow along with the exercises and allow your brain cells or your muscles of understanding to develop. That's how it works, right? So great job, Cameron. Michael Kilner Davis, I will be looking at... Um, helping out with the life fantasy uh, great one gig because he has celebrated i'm really super happy i can start the advanced training so he's done the last exercise of the uh, intermediate archive and already I, I would employ him to be a cleanup artist because let's look at his consistency look at his volume um michael is absolutely um the bomb when it comes to that so I'm definitely going to be asking uh, Michael to um, uh, help out with some of those uh, breakdowns and uh, in-betweens on the Great One uh, test. 
So amazing work, Michael. Absolutely love that. Well done. Welcome to the Intermediate Archive. Selena, this is great. Fantastic to see you making studies from the video. But then now take these studies and, and do them with another character, right? Not just, uh, it's great that you followed me along in that video and that built the brain cells, but now do it with another character. There's so many model sheets online. Give it a go. Cameron learning about cartilage. See, look at this man. I mean, Cameron is just there filling this wall up. Um, Daniel Angel one uh, quadruped trot. It's looking good, but he, I don't feel like it feels like he's kind of um, you're stretching and elongating. Shut up. You're stretching and elongating the um, you're stretching and elongating the legs and they're barely leaving. He's barely leaving the ground. You followed along with the tutorial, Daniel. Um, and it, it works, but it doesn't have the the bounciness of it because it feels like his legs are barely leaving the ground. He feels almost like he's he's um, it's got some character to it. I put it on loop. I put it on loop. Can we loop the playback, please? I don't know. So, again, there's nothing much I can say, Daniel. You followed the training exercise and you're building the, the respective brain cells. I feel that he's, 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 we're not feeling too much of a lift in those legs. They're dragging and they're a little bit long in that elongating in, in that regard. Michael, again, with his... Uh, single suspension run i don't need to say anything about this i'm just like giving michael some air time because he's just doing a really good job with these uh with these um intermediate exercises i remember that so again this is britney's um Gerbis, I worked a bit on the first part of an animation for my last project. It's not my thesis project anymore. I'm starting with another thing, but I still want to work a bit more on it to polish my portfolio. Now, Gerbis has tried to go for this anime style running. Um, so it's got that kind of staccato anime timing to it. I've seen this, right? But I do feel... Um, I know what you're going for with that anime feel, but it just feels very unnatural to me, Gerbis. I mean, I mean, this, I don't really know what's happening here. The character is, I know that you can draw, and I've, I'll, I've considered employing you for some things uh, as well, um, uh, based on your drawing. So, but this, this is a, a strange pose. I don't know why he pauses and has this, maybe he's supposed to, he, he slams up against a wall or something, right? Right, so he slams up against a wall. But now when he pushes himself off against the wall, see, that's fine then. I figured it out what it is, right? Um, this step here doesn't really work, right? There's There should be some secondary action. It's a, it's a strange, like, move here where he kind of just locks into position and he goes off balance and tries to catch himself um so they're nice drawings and your your timing is good and some of your arcing of the arm is good but i would say i like the 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 re-anticipation here and the landing and the settle um and the anticipation of the takeoff but again um lovely drawings here but again my issue with it is, is it doesn't feel like he's running and stumbling i know he's running and stumbling because you've drawn him in those poses but it just um perhaps that's what you want to do this is a difficult one for me to talk about because you're going through real animator training and you're learning the skills of arcing, timing, slowing in and slowing out. But you're wanting, perhaps you like anime and you're wanting to recreate the anime style. But this would be the kind of anime that I would say w would 
I wouldn't particularly rate the animation of. Because it's movement, but it doesn't feel alive. It's just like, oh, okay, he's slipping. But it's, it's just like darting from one... The, the one thing that makes it feel nice, which is this little kind of thing that kids love about anime, which you've done really well, is this little kind of circling of the arms. Because that feels... Why that feels good? Because in all of that, there's a feeling of naturalism, right? That feels like he's actually caught his step, right? And he's landed. So this bit is fantastic, right? This one little bit here is what makes the animation really nice, right? You think like the timing, the settling in before taking off into the next pose and the bouncy run here, right? Which isn't bad, but I'm not sure if he's coming to proportion to the right size. Um, you can cheat it, but here I think if he's bending down like this, right? And he's that low down. When he straightens up, he needs to be a bit taller and bigger than that. But it's okay. Um, it works to a degree, like the way an anime works. So I'm going to judge it on two various levels. As a piece of anime style animation that we see in some of these anime shows, well done. I think you've recreated it very, very well. But from my perspective, I would say that it feels really awkward with the way you're transitioning to these extreme poses. It doesn't feel like these little kind of jolty timings. You're trying to exaggerate and have his leg up and his leg there. It's just, it just feels very unnatural. But then it's all balanced and brought together with this beautiful little bit that you have there which is which is which is really nice so that's my personal take on that but at the same time is it good enough to get you work on an anime i believe so because i've seen a lot worse in some anime out there um i remember again this is to do with a personal taste thing but it's also my view on what is good animation and you know and why the standard of animation has dropped so much everybody praises Miyazaki so much I would see I'd see this in a Miyazaki movie right so in some ways people might think oh I'm criticizing it but I'm I'm being very um, reflective about it I'm like saying well that's my view on it it's not natural enough. It doesn't really work for me. But at the same time, I could see this in a Miyazaki movie. Now, why do I say that? Well, I watch Kiki's Delivery Service, where that boy in the glasses is running with his bike or something out there. and uh, I, I can't remember. And I remember watching that with my film with, with my wife, trying to convince her to watch anime because she didn't really like anime. And I said, look, and she was enjoying it. But then she looked at me, she said, that's really bad. She's not an animator, but because she looked, she said, that's really bad. And I couldn't defend it. It was really, really awkward looking run, really strange. But I get it. That's the way they animate in those shows and in those movies. So it's perhaps it's their cartooning. Um, I don't consider it to be particularly good cartooning because it it feels very, very unnatural and awkward to me. But um since the drawing style of what you've got is like that, I would say that in that regard, it's a huge success, Kerbis. So carry on doing what you're doing. Um, you're living out your dreams. Um, and that's what is the most important aspect. It's not about animating the way I think is the right way to animate. It's about learning the, the rules and the fundamentals which you actually clearly have and applying them to what your dreams and ambitions were so well done cameron black with his 360 um head turn now look cameron's done this on paper right people gonna ask him what software no well done cameron 
Okay, so I'm going to, um, Daniel Garcia, I think what will help you with this cartoon drawing, this will be the last one and then I'm going to make a move. What will help you with this cartoon drawing, like of this baby and stuff, it is I go and look at my um, live streams about cartoon characters like Gadget and Monterey Jack, right? And the whole Mickey Mouse thing, right? You go, we're gonna, we're gonna move slightly away from anatomy, but but not really, right? I'll show you, right? So if you've watched this stream, you will have seen, you will have seen what, um, you will have seen what I I did with that, not taking my pen off the page, drawing, right? With that, with anatomy, right? So. I always do this because I think it's important that people understand, right, the whole, the whole, cartoon drawing thing, right? Everything's kind of based on, on this guy here, right? And when we did the, the Monterey Jack, right he was the same thing right he had his eyes hair like this right and his nose was up here like this right but he had a big thing here like this and on the side was his ear right Right, that was the Monterey Jack, right? The gadget, right? She had this kind of thing, right? Right, with the ear at the side. Right, so everything kind of comes off that circle. So if you're going to do a baby character, right, a really easy baby, you can do the whole Elmer Fudd thing, right? But you can have just like two eye widths apart, a big kind of forehead, ear, a bottom lip, right? I need to figure out a better nose than that, right? It's not very appealing, right? So, but you can have this kind of thing here, like that. Maybe I'll put the eye a little bit closer together. It's a little bit further, make it bigger, right? And then you can give him a little bit of hair, right? That's more appealing, right? So you take away the anatomy and a little bit. You still have the anatomy, right? His zygomatic, his maxilla, right? Right, his frontal, right? And his nasal. So we still have the anatomy, baby Skeletor. <laughs> right, but um, um, uh, but then you know, again, you want to treat the body like this bean shape, right? And then you want to think about the legs sitting off that bean shape, right? You can play with it like that. So again, you can take an anatomical pose, right? So let's do a baby walking, right? Let me like do like a, a life drawing of a baby crawling, right? Using that kind of um, So the latissimus dorsi will be there. Right. So let's 
let's just say that this is a human baby right that we're making up the pose right you see cartooning is so much harder than than life drawing right life drawing is the key to court cartooning but people really don't understand that this stuff is just entry level to do good cartoon characters right now they look at the cartoon character and they'll think oh that's so much simpler right so let's say we've got our human baby hair like this right so let's just put it in a nappy right let's give it a little bit of a a belly orgy little arm all right the other leg hair like that all right so and let's focus on the realism aspect of it all right Always oh, right, so right, right. So there's our our human version, right? So now with the cartooning, we can do the same thing, right? We can just have like the bean for the body right but we're going to take the legs and we're going to make them super fat and thin right like that we're going to turn everything into these kind of shapes right now we're going to make the shoulders thin but I'm gonna fatten let's just play with the fingers a little bit right so I'm gonna really look at how these shapes you see these appealing kind of shapes I'm gonna really look at I'm gonna make the head super big right I'm gonna change the angle of that head So, cartoon drawing is a skill in itself, and it has to really be learned to do it well, right? So then let's take this hair, right? And see the differences. So, how are we doing for time? Okay. So... Now I'm going to really focus on on these shapes. That's what I'm going to focus on. Getting really amazing shapes out of my out of my drawing right so the nappy I'm gonna put bigger like this so this is again why I talk about classic Disney drawing not not the rubbish that we get now is some of the strongest drawing in the world because it really uses the two laws that most people really 
overlook but know absolutely nothing about um, because they take the in my opinion they take some of the longest to learn is the law of appeal and the law of exaggeration right so learning to just mimic life and draw a realistic thing is really kind of entry level stuff right this is entry level stuff right anybody can do it who's learned anatomy and do learned a little bit of fundamental fine art training right but this kind of this kind of drawing right Th that just has that appeal factor that you know it's been done by a professional and you know it's been done by somebody who who really knows what they're doing right um, it ain't just some silly cheap cartooning that is like a high-grade cartooning right so you see the the difference right that we get from just focusing too much on anatomy now i have told you daniel anatomy 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 but as the man bruce lee says right pretend this is a cup right <laughs> a cup of toilet roll <laughs> completely killing my humor here completely killing my point with too much humor right even that's not gonna like if i had millions of followers the comment section would be just blown up making a joke out of that right so this is full i've got to empty it right and fill it with a new cup right that's all it is right so in order to do that you've got to have that cup of anatomy that you filled with but now your anatomy cup and your realism cup is overflowing so you got to cartoon cartoonify to get the appeal sometimes i sit here and i don't even know just what happened right as far as I'm concerned, I'm talking and I'm looking at the screen and I'm thinking, shit, I've just designed an awesome baby character. I've just drawn a really convincing picture of a kid walking forward, which is really strong. And I didn't even think about it. I was just talking and now I've, now I've realized what I've done. That's another thing why I love what I do so much, why I love drawing so much. It's so fulfilling. Like I always say it. And I'm not saying it to boast because I'm saying it to show you that that's how you can enjoy your life. Rather than fearing AI, understand that as a human being, you are a living person. And what only makes your life worth living is a sense of fulfillment, a sense of purpose, not a sense of just constant consumption. People who consume constantly are bored and they're purposeless. They're drifting through life. AI caters for consumers. So even if you've got an idea and you want to flesh out that idea, even if you can draw a little bit, you use AI to, to fill in the gaps and it's easy and then it's you'll try this, you'll try that and it's a consumer's game. But a real artist, somebody who loves the craft of doing the art and feels fulfilled and rewarded, it's so like that's never going to go away. You're always going to want to do that because that's what rings the right bell inside you um so don't fear all this ai to people who are fearing ai and you're thinking oh but what about a job what about a job most people who want a job in animation don't get that job anyway so they're just making excuses right i i, I the industry using ai is here now you're free to create your art on your terms and not hide behind somebody else for money you want to be an artist now's the time to do it now's the time where you'll get the recognition for your ability to do something and now it's good because the people who are going to want to consume an artist's artwork are other artists who are passionate about art so you'll be respected by the right people your peers so there won't be no excuse of shit sells anymore your peers will be watching your work because everybody's consuming ai stuff 
as AI gets better, who cares who did it? All we want is consumption, consumption, consumption. But the people who will be looking at your stuff are people who are interested in drawing. So they'll be wanting to see somebody else's drawings and they'll, they'll be wanting to be inspired by somebody else's drawing. That's never going to go away. There's always opportunity for you to do your work. And there's always opportunity because the human condition is purpose and fulfillment. And that's what artists like you and me want and need. Now, why am I saying that? Because I just said, like to me, I'm going to delete this. Let's delete it now, right? Um, no, I'm not going to. I might make a nice thumbnail, but I, I can d d delete it, right? And um, uh, and not be not bother bother about it. But the whole thing happened, and I wasn't even aware of it happening. And I sit back and I look and I go, "Well, that's pretty good, that." You know, I didn't I didn't expect that to just happen like that. There you go, and you'll get to that stage too. So, um, so there you go. That's my advice to you, Daniel. So rather than trying to clean up and do these kind of pasted on eyes and things, move away from the anatomy so much and start to look at cartoons. All right. Okay. So I'm going to think about ending the stream here. We haven't been in the group for a little while, so I thought it'll be nice uh, as I've commissioned Life Fantasy to involve some other community members. That is real animator training growth development and progress on facebook go and become a part of our community also um what i will say to you is one final thing if you're looking to uh develop skills like life fantasy and some of the other people like cameron and people that you've seen you can study on the real animator training library program go to ambanimation.com Click on join the Real Animator Training Library. You are getting the equivalent of 20 years of animation experience. That's me. Everything I know. So 20 years of animation experience. Storyboarding. Animation supervision. Animation director. Direction. Animator. Storyboard artist. Head of story. Character designer. Visual development art. Layout art. All of these things I've worked on in the 20 years of my time in the animation industry when drawing mattered, okay, not now, any, you know, when drawing mattered, real animator training is what you're getting for the price of a, of a gaming laptop or an iPad Pro, right? So you have no excuse now. If you really want to get these skills, it's all here. If you click join now, you're given uh, the choice of uh, training archives and edutainment. Edutainment is kind of like something. Uh, let's just refresh the page there. Edutainment is something where you basically watch like YouTube, like tips and tricks. Training, you're getting step by step instruction from those 20 years of animation experience. So I'm making step by step follow along videos. You got basics, intermediate advanced and just watch these videos they will help you out there uh, you can either buy it in a bundle or you can uh, buy them one at a time real animator training library the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation uh, 20 years of animation experience at the highest level in supervisory directory uh, roles at all areas character design uh, character animation storyboard layout visual development I've done it all and um, that's what um, you're, you're, you're basically I'm sharing everything with you in these videos so go to ambanimation.com uh, and turn your life around um, there all right so I am going to um, I'm going to call the stream a day the stream will stay up Charlene because it's a uh, it's a stream for life fantasy to um, develop her skills as she has been commissioned to clean up my animation. So uh, this stream has no, uh, it's, there's nothing in this stream that is exclusive training library content. It is for the community. This is more so a stream for my real animator community rather than even YouTube or anything like that. It's uh, it's like a family gathering here 
uh, where the, the hardcore real animator community are witnessing one of their own getting a commission and um, after all their hard work and uh, they're going to be uh, seeing some of their work reviewed so it's purely your a stream for you guys okay I'm, I'm gonna have to make a move um, I'm going to be away for the weekend so um, I don't believe I'll be you'll be seeing any streams from me until next week uh, but we will be making a start on the pro archive uh, storyboarding dialogue uh, following up life fantasy's great one um, uh, cleanup uh, we'll be doing some storyboard uh, dialogue Hopefully you learn patch tunes. Yes, uh, the the one thing which I shared with Cameron Allen Davidson Black, Frank's makes movies. The one thing I shared with Cameron Allen Davidson Black was um, uh, that drawing technique, the fine art technique of, you know, Gimel Nicolaidis. It's not blind drawing, but uh, the natural way to draw, um, not taking your pen off the page and joining everything up. That technique is very, very in, uh, useful, and you've just seen it done at a very high level, and uh, hopefully it'll open your eyes and make you think about doing it too. Um, so awesome that you were able to learn something from this stream. Um, everybody giving life fantasy love and uh, encouragement. She doesn't need it, but uh, it's always nice to see, so please continue giving her um, motivation. Um, because I know that life fantasy um, is uh, the real deal, 100%. Okay, see you later. See you all on the next stream. And as ever, keep it real, people.